We're going to try to put 20 terabytes of storage on my small deck. So I picked up my Steam Deck and it happens to be the smallest deck that you could possibly get. It's the 64 gigabyte version, which is not even enough to install Elden Ring once you account for SteamOS. And so I actually want to have games on my Steam Deck. So the logical step is replacing the 64 gig card that came with the Steam Deck with the highest capacity M.2 card that you could possibly get. This is a one terabyte SSD that you can find on eBay and it's gonna run you about 210 bucks. There is potentially a two terabyte version coming out from Micron sometime soon, but there's no real ETA on that. And then to upgrade it a little bit more, you could potentially even add in a micro SD card, which we have right here. That's one terabyte of extra storage. This is again, another 110 bucks. So we're spending an extra $330 to get two terabytes of storage on the Steam Deck, which is all well and good. In any normal scenario, two terabytes of on the go storage is enough for whatever games you're trying to play. But this is Brett Tech Tips. I'm not satisfied. We need more. You could potentially add in external SSD by connecting it to the USB-C port, but we're gonna go one step further. This is a RAID card with four, four terabyte high-end SSDs. We're gonna put these in RAID zero, connect them, to the Steam Deck, and then we're gonna get 16 terabytes. Add that to the two terabytes that are on there, that's 18 terabytes. But I said 20 terabytes, because we have more plans. Then we're gonna try to connect this RAID card, which I have four more terabytes, one terabyte of each of these Rocket 4 Plus, that we're gonna try to connect to the Steam Deck. And the only reason we can do wild and crazy stuff like this is thanks to the support of people like you over on our Patreon. I'd highly encourage that you check it out at the link in the video description. Your monthly support has meant that we can keep going even after we had to leave South Africa, and the ongoing support means that we don't have to necessarily worry about sponsors making it so that we can afford my crazy and wild experiments. We've recently revamped it so that we're in more communication with you and we're gonna have a whole bunch of stuff coming to our Patreon sometime soon. So if you wanna join, support the wild stuff we do here at UFD Tech, that'd be great. So now let's get this set up. So stage one is taking the back of the Steam Deck, taking out this M.2 and instead of connecting it here, connecting it via USB. And we have this dope USB hub, which is going to allow us to get extra stuff involved, including a spare M.2 port. We have more USB ports as well as ethernet so that we can download all of our games at the fastest speed possible. The only issue is that the cable for this is like four inches. So we can't attach it to the top and we have an extender coming in, but it's gonna look weird. And because everybody complained about the cooling on the back of the Steam Deck, I am also fixing that with a USB fan. We're gonna blow across, because in case you don't know, you can check out the Gamers Nexus video right up there. The cooling on the Steam Deck actually relies on the back panel in order to create a negative pressure setup, and it needs that to move air across the memory modules. And we're gonna start with the M.2 to PCI Express adapter. We also need this power supply. So the M.2 port on the Steam Deck is only PCI Express 3.0, so we're not gonna be getting the full speeds. And yes, I could have gone with eight terabyte drives, but I didn't have the spare cash enough to spend $1,700 per drive in order to load this up with 32 terabytes. I'm too broke for that. But if you support us on Patreon, maybe we could up this. If this video gets 50,000 likes, we'll get the extra one, which has eight slots and put eight, eight terabytes on here. We'll do 64 terabytes. We need to plug it in. Beautiful. And now I need to put the boot drive on here because we're going to boot from USB. Wait, watch out. What? There's a snake in there. What? What does that mean? There's a snake in my boot. In order to boot into the bootloader on to the Steam Deck, you just hold down the volume down, turn on the power, and hopefully it's gonna give us the option to boot via USB. It does, look, we can boot from it. When I was testing this out, this was actually a problem I forgot I encountered. So the original boot drive I had on there, if you try to stick that into the USB, it doesn't work. But if you install SteamOS while it's installed via USB, then you can stick it in the Steam Deck and it'll still work, it'll do both. But if you start with it installed in the M.2 port, then it's like, I don't know what to do because my bootloaders from MVM me zero and one and now you're trying to make me boot from mmbck and it's just it won't do it freaking linux now i need to go through the complicated process of installing steam os we're gonna have to like wipe this drive that's essentially what's gonna have to happen now i'm gonna try one more time to boot from this guy no so we have the SteamOS recovery set up and I essentially need to install SteamOS onto this drive again, but while it's in USB mode so that I can actually boot from USB. It is SDA1. So you can actually see all of the drives are showing up. We have all four of the Rocket 4 Pluses. They're there. We just can't use them right now because we can't boot into SteamOS from the way we have things set up. I know how to install or recover SteamOS on any drive. 
I don't know Linux, but I had to figure it out in order to make all of this work. I'm the guy who typed in sudo-rm-rf or rm-rf. I deleted my entire Linux operating system because somebody told me to. Uh, it's not moving. Kind of worried. This is blinking, so that's a good sign. This action will re-image the Steam Deck. This will permanently destroy all data. Permanently. There's no guide to how to install 16 terabytes of storage on your freaking Steam Deck. Don't buy this dock for the Steam Deck. It's absolutely awful and it was the source of all my problems. We're gonna be losing the M.2 port, but that wasn't the key part of our plan. I've got everything working now. Gosh, took me 14 hours. So we have this USB-C hub, which gives us HDMI power in, extra USB-C, and then also ethernet so we can download everything quickly. But the M.2 port still connected. We've got the 16 terabytes of NVMe storage here, except for it's not in RAID yet. So coming in to the Steam OS operating system, the first thing we want to do is hit power and we want to switch to desktop mode so that we have access to the command line of Linux. Sounds like I know what I'm talking about, right? So by listing our disks using F disk, we have to sudo freaking into it. F disk L. We can see that all of the Rocket 4 pluses are showing up. We have them. Now what we want to do is create a RAID array so that they're all usable as one single drive, which I don't know how to do without a guide. So that's what exactly I'm gonna do here. We're gonna create, we're gonna name it dev MD0 level equals zero so that we have access to all of the storage. Devices equals four. And then we just type the name. So NVMe zero and one, dev NVMe one and one. And then theoretically it's done. But did that work? F disk dash L? No. To ensure the raid was successful, you do cat slash proc slash md step. Is that active raid zero? Okay, it is working. We, we do have that. Okay, now we need to mount it. Okay, so how we're gonna do that is make fs nft ntfs. So I've already kind of done this on the back end, and xt4 doesn't work. Uh, xfat didn't work. I had to put an ntfs in order to get everything to work for Steam OS. Maybe that's because I'm a Linux idiot, but I got it working previously with the four terabytes. So I'm gonna go with that now. Completed successfully, have a nice day. What in the crap? Okay, we have a 14.55 terabyte drive right there. Do you see that? I'm counting that as 16, just so we're clear. So now the question is, I go into Steam here, found that this is the easiest way to add extra drives. You go into Steam, settings, downloads, Steam library folders, add a new one. It should automatically pop up, but it's not. And if I select MD0, it's gonna say it can't do it. I didn't mount the drive. That's that's my problem. Whoopsies. Oh, I didn't make the direct. Did you know that it's good? If you have instructions, you should follow them in order. That's usually how you get things done. That's mounted. Okay, now that it's mounted, will it pop up here? Yeah, it works. <laughs> Ah, there it is, 14.6 terabytes, baby. Let's add that. And now we should be able to switch back on over to gaming mode and we can start to download my entire Steam library. But I only have 138 games. Tyler, how many games do you have? 350-ish? 250-ish. We're gonna get all the games downloaded. We have enough storage space. Okay, installed, I have 48. How do I sort by non-installed games? I don't think they have that option. Valve, please allow me to see what games aren't installed. That would make my job of installing 16 terabytes of games way easier. I don't care if it's unsupported. I want my entire library on here for when it finally does become supported. That's the most important thing. Wait, this might be faster in desktop mode. Hold up. I should use desktop mode. There we go. Yes, and now I can see what's installed and what's not. This should be something that they have in the gaming mode too. Or maybe I'm just too dumb to not see that it's there. Not enough free disk space? What are you doing? Where are you putting this? Steam apps, common, Steam library on the MD0. It says there's 14.6 terabytes free, but it can't download a seven terabyte game? I'm gonna figure this out. I figured it out. I'm a genius. We have Pajama Sam in No Need to Hide When It's Dark Outside now downloading on the 16 terabyte RAID card. So to just quickly kind of go over what I did wrong, I put everything back in XT4 file format for everybody who cares. And I just didn't have the correct read write permissions. So I had to use chown or as I like to call it, chown. And then that fixed everything. Cause I, I don't know Linux. It took me six hours, but I got there. Also, in case you want to give me Linux advice, why don't you become a member of our Patreon? Anyways, we also discovered that when you go into the library, if you just shift click, 
all of the games. It allows you to select all of them and then you can right click and download selected. And that made it so easy for me to download my entire library of roughly 200 games. Then we logged into Kyler's library of like 200 games that I don't have. And now we are currently downloading that. As you can see here, we're at 73 items of 207 currently downloading. We've downloaded 534 gigabytes in the last few minutes. We downloaded 2.5 terabytes of my drive of my Steam games. And as you can see on the background, I accidentally didn't set it to not put desktop icons for every single game. So it, it, it just started going ham for all of them. So if we go into our Steam library folders, you can see currently we have the one terabyte internal drive, then we have the 16 terabyte extra drive, and then the SD cards on there, but I've been having a tricksy issue with that. It's, there we go. But once all the games are downloaded, we're then gonna see, is my solution the fastest possible Steam Deck loading solution? Because I think it is. We did it, it's all downloaded. All of our 340 combined games are installed on our Steam Deck. They they don't all run, they don't all don't work on the Steam Deck, but we still have nine terabytes left on the external drive. We did not need this much storage. Also, I killed my SD card reader. It corrupts all of the SD cards that we put in there, so I can't even get up to 20 terabytes now. The question is, how fast is this drive? Is it worth it over the internal, or is it worth it to just get a really large external USB SSD, something like that? Well, here are the numbers. So comparing to just having the internal M.2 to the RAID card that we've set up, it's nearly identical in every game we tested. Elden Ring, Portal 2, God of War, Hades, Cyberpunk, mostly all of the same. There were a couple of oddities here and there. Uh, the Elden Ring loaded into the save much faster on the internal M.2, but it loaded to the menu much faster on the raid card. No big deal. But comparing it to what I think the raid card replaces, which is that external USB drive, we actually get much faster speeds. The only game that wasn't much faster was Portal 2, and that's probably because it's an old game that caps out. But for Elden Ring, the raid card loaded 31% faster than an external SSD. It loaded 11% faster in God of War than the external SSD. It loaded 2.8% faster in Hades, but that's because Hades is already like wicked fast. And then in Cyberpunk, it was 24% faster. So having a RAID card hooked up to the M.2 port is essentially the same as having an M.2 card actually on there, but then you get the added benefit of extra storage and it can make it so that it's faster than what you have on an external USB. But we have to close this out by me trying to take this a step farther. We have the RAID card with an M.2 going to another RAID card, and then this should hopefully give us the 20 terabytes of storage. Okay, everything's plugged in. That's spun up. Oh, the fan spin on this guy too. It's doing the blinky blink. <laughs> That's a lot of games. The RAID card's still working. It has all of them, because I have three on here and then the fourth one's here. I can still access it, and it's RAID zero, so if one of these was down, they wouldn't all work. Now I have to see if the other ones are here. No, so it only is detecting the one that's on this first slot. It's not detecting the other three. But now the question is, can we get a GPU to work on this? If it detects the drive, will a GPU work? It works! We got the 6600 XT, and then we've got 12 terabytes of storage. We haven't set it up, but it's there. Get subscribed for a future video. Support us on Patreon. It works!